Welcome to the 2023 uh, Charged Up uh, Coaches Workshop. Uh, we're going to go through an overview of the uh, event and the rules. And so we'll get started with one thing I want to emphasize is uh, the resources that are available to you. Best place to go is the website, Macomb County Science Olympiad website and then go to the event charged up uh, there you will find all the rules for the event uh, there'll be this presentation will be posted along with uh, previous presentations uh, from previous years from the workshops uh, there'll be a handout uh, for this year's workshop as long as hand as well as handouts from previous years work uh, workshops There'll be some example questions and answers. And then uh, also there's a very important one, the FAQ. It just uh, answers questions that people have asked over time and uh, to clarify the rules, to clarify the event. Um, also on the website, you can see that a kit is available uh, with the related parts that uh, the students will see during the event. It can help you with uh, training and preparation. And then there's also a kit insert, which is a, a really nice document that describes uh, the components and the basic principles uh, of those comp electrical components. Okay, let's start with the rules. Um, the students will be tested on their knowledge of electricity and related concepts. And the exam will cover DC circuits, not AC. It'll conductors, diodes, voltage, current, resistance, uh, schematic drawings, um, meter reading, and electrical sources and electrical safety. The team size for this event is, is typically one or two students. Uh, students will need to understand the terms conductor, insulator, open circuit, short circuit, normally open switches, normally closed switches, series circuits, parallel circuits, series parallel circuits, um, meter readings, voltage, current, resistance, diodes, sources of like different sources of electricity and electrical safety practices so the format of uh, of the event it's a station format there's typically seven stations so the room is broken up with seven stations and students are starting at each of the seven stations and then you spend uh, an equal amount of time, it's two to three minutes at each station and then you advance to the next station. So everyone's kind of going in a circle. Um, again, spending an equal amount of time at each station. You cannot, uh, five of the stations, are true false multiple choice using a zip grade um, one point questions will typically have two options for example true or false or maybe an a or b type answer uh, two point questions have three to five options so kind of your typical multiple choice question with three to five options and there's some zero point questions which are tiebreakers and their essay. So it'll be a question to ask the student to describe something. And again, it's zero points. Um, only complete this tiebreaker, spend time on this tiebreaker once you finish all the other questions for that particular station. One station will be drawing an electrical circuit. It'll be on a standard eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So scoring 
is one to two points for each component drawn correctly. For example, a if you draw the switches correctly, you get points. If you draw the batteries and the connections correctly and the polarity, you get points. If you draw the lights or the LEDs correctly, you get points. And then there's a bonus if you get all the different components correctly, there's a bonus for 100% correctness. The next station is constructing an electrical circuit using the components that are provided. Here, there's uh, it's broken into two sections, an easy circuit and a hard circuit, and you can only do one. So based on your ability, you want to choose the one that is appropriate for the students, you know, for the student that's completing it. You know, if they want to choose the easy circuit, it, they can get up to 20 points. If they choose the hard circuit, it's for up to 40 points. So as you can imagine, the easy circuit is more basic. It's for the uh, the, the beginning students, students who have more experience with this event may choose to do the hard circuit and uh, go for the 40 points. Again, you can only do one. Um, typically, is uh, I mean, it depends on the amount of help we get with the event. If we have enough help with the event, uh, we can have a person spend more time on this particular station and we can give partial credit. But uh, well, right now we say no partial credit, but if we have the ability to do it, we will give partial credit on station seven. One uh, thing I want to point out here with this station is with the switches. I have seen it over the last number of years, students really make a number of errors with the switches and we'll get into that in a minute but uh, again you need to use the right switch that's uh, asked for in this circuit and again we'll come we'll come back to that in a minute okay that's the rules any any questions on the rules at this point Uh, yeah, I have a quick question. Um, could the students potentially start at the the circuit station where they have to build the circuit? Yes. So you know, the, the, the there will be seven teams that uh, well, s seven or fourteen teams, you know, uh, that are in the event. Um, yes, they will start at different stations. So. There's going to be a team starting at every single station. So yes, you could potentially be starting on number seven. Any other questions at this point? Okay, we'll we'll move on and we can take more questions. Uh, later. Yeah, there, <clears throat> there is a cash. Uh, there is a question in the chat that says, "Will there be any?" addressing convention flow versus electron flow. No, it's conventional electrical flow from positive to negative. Uh, we, we do not uh, discuss electrons in any way. Thank you. OK, we'll move on to uh, some of the basics uh, of uh, of the topics. Schematic symbols, uh, batteries. One important thing here is you need to show the polarity of the battery, which is the plus and the minus side of the battery. So as you see the symbols here, uh, the first symbol shows the polarity with the plus and minus. The one here does not. This will not be marked correct. And the reason is, especially when you're drawing the circuit, it's very difficult to see the difference between the larger line and the smaller line in some people's handwriting. 
So that might be just two lines. And so it's, we need to have the polarity of the battery shown when you're drawing the circuit. Here we have the symbol for a light bulb. Here we have the symbol for a diode. And again, you must show the polarity plus minus of a diode. An LED, same thing. It's these lines pointing upward show that it's uh, giving off light. But again, you must show the polarity, the plus and the minus on the LED and have it connected properly. For LEDs and diodes, the plus goes to the plus side of the battery. So plus the plus is an easy way to, to remember that. Um, oops. Another uh, thing to remember on uh, schematic symbols, when you have two lines crossing with a dot, that means they are connected. There's a connection between those lines. If you have two lines crossing with a um, jump over one, that means there is no connection. Okay, switches, I mentioned this earlier. Normally open switches, if we look at this symbol right here, normally open switches means that they are currently in the open position and a, one would lower the switch and close it to, turn, to enable the circuit. In a normally closed switch, that means it is currently in the closed position enabling the circuit and a person would raise it to open the circuit. Again, you need to know the difference between these two switches. Now, there are four type switches that are commonly used in this event. The first one here is a single pull, single throw. So there's one, one blade connecting to one point. Next type here is called a single pull, double throw. So that means this one blade can swing to either the right or the left to make connection. Third type switch is double pull, single throw. So there's two blades connecting to in one direction. And finally, our last switch is double pull, double throw. So there's two blades that they can swing to the right or swing to the left. Again, I wanna emphasize that the students really need to be familiar with these type switches and the function of these switches. In, in the circuit design and build the circuit, the students need to use either draw or use the correct switch. It is, I've seen it many times where they use the wrong switch. For example, this double throw switch here. Really, the reality is it's two single pole switches together. But you cannot use half of this switch as a single pull, single throw switch. You can't do that. You, you would have to use this switch here if you are asked to use a single pull, single throw switch. So again, know the difference between these switches and be careful when you're looking at the instructions of what switch is being asked to be used. Okay, some uh, example questions. These are called circuit prediction. And so you're basically being asked, what is gonna happen with the circuit that you see here? And you're asked, again, this is a zip grade question, so you're gonna choose A or B. So you're gonna choose A 
if all the bulbs in the circuit drawn will light as shown, and this is key, as shown. So again, when you look at a switch position, you have to look at it, the switch in the position that it's shown, not if you would close the switch. So again, you have to, and we'll go through some examples here, and you select B, if one or more of the bulbs will not light. Okay, let's go through some examples. Here we have four questions. The answer is in green. But let's look at this first one. We have two batteries in series with two bulbs in series. What will happen? The answer is A, both bulbs will light as shown. Let's go to the second one now. We have two batteries in parallel connected to two bulbs in parallel. As shown, the answer is A, both bulbs will light. Okay, let's move on to the next one. We have a single battery connected to a normally open switch connected to a single bulb. Here, the answer is B. The bulb will not light. And the reason is, as shown, the switch is in the open position. So the bulb will not light. Oh, or, or the bulb will not be lit, I should say. Okay, the next one. Number four, we have two batteries. Take a look at their polarity. They have opposite polarity. So this is not the correct way to hook two batteries up for one. Now we have a parallel circuit with a normally closed switch. And what that's doing is that's short circuiting the batteries. So we have we have multiple things going on here and we have a bulb in parallel with the batteries and the switch. So because our batteries are reverse polarity to each other and also because our, we have a, a normally closed switch which is short circuiting the batteries this bulb will not light. So our answer is B. Okay, some more examples of circuits. So question number five relates to this top circuit. Which bulbs light when switch X is closed? So if we look at this circuit, we have two batteries in series with the correct, correct polarity, so that's good. Then we have a bulb in parallel with the batteries before the switch. So we have a bulb with a switch in the normally open position, switch Y. And then we have switch X, which is in the normally open position, going to batter or uh, bulb A. So again, let's go back to the question. When switch X is closed, so when switch X is closed, it will turn on bulb A. Bulb B, since it's controlled by switch Y, will be off. So our answer is A, light A will be lit. Okay, our, num our problem number six <clears throat> relates to this lower circuit on the right. <clears throat> Switch S1 controls which lights. So if we look at this circuit, switch S1, which is normally closed, it's going to control all three lights. So these all three lights will be on initially and if we open the switch the lights will go off so again going to question six 
D, all the lights are controlled by switch S1. Okay, next one. What type of circuit is shown in circuit two? So we have two batteries in series connected to a normally closed switch S1 connected in series with three bulbs. So this is a series circuit, A. Okay, some other uh, questions that uh, you may see, so types of questions you may see. Uh, true, false, and multiple choice. So number eight, it is never safe to touch a down power line. The answer is true. Amps are the unit used to measure the amount of electric current. That's true. A short, a short wire has higher resistance than a long wire. That's false. The longer the wire, the higher the resistance. All right, meters. Here's a multiple choice on meters. To measure the voltage, in a standard household circuit, an electrician would use what setting? And again, you read the question carefully. You have two types of circuits. You have AC circuits and DC circuits. Standard household electrical socket would be your home electric service, which is AC. So in this answer is volts AC. Okay, number 12. The resistance of the aluminum rod of an aluminum rod is what? And so again, during the a, a test, the students uh, will have the use of a of an electric meter. And so they can utilize the meter to put it to the two ends of an aluminum rod. They have to choose the right setting. So they know the question is looking for resistance. So you have to turn the, res the meter to the ohms setting to measure resistance. And so based on that, uh, based on their measurement, they would likely measure something near 0.02 ohms. So that's the answer, E. Okay, a circuit tester. There's a section in the in the uh, event and one of the stations where you have to build your own circuit tester. And so so you're not using an electric meter. You're building your own circuit tester and you can do this very quickly and easy with some wire, a battery and a light and then as you can see here in this first picture, you have a wire connected to a battery, connect using another wire connected to a light, connected to another wire. Now you would use the yellow and red, yellow and black wires to touch different items to determine whether it will complete the circuit. You know, and one of the key things to know is, you know, metallic objects uh, will conduct electricity. Non-metallic objects are insulators and will not conduct electricity. So an aluminum rod, you can use the, the uh, your circuit tester to test this and determine that it's a conductor or you can go by base, you know, for speed, you can go by the fact that it's an aluminum rod and you know aluminum is conductive and you can immediately just mark your answer rather than actually doing the test. So the students, if they are familiar with the metallic objects and non-metallic objects, they can quickly answer these questions without necessarily testing. But if you want to confirm your, your uh, 
what you think is correct, you can use the tester to touch the the different objects, including like an aluminum rod or a, a wood dowel. OK, next one, number 14. There are cards that have been made up and you need to use your circuit tester to determine which ones are connected to which point. So this is just an example. And this card here shows this is the back of the card, which you can't see, it's covered up, but I'm just showing you this for uh, training purposes, how from the letter side to the number side, there are wires connecting all the various uh, numbers to different letters. Again, this is covered up and the students cannot see this, but this is the principle of these cards. So here, you have to determine where is 14 connected. So you use your circuit tester, you place it on number 14, and then you go down the line. You try A, B, C, D, and it will be connected to one of the five. Um, then you go to 15, try all of them. Go to 16, try all of them, and you determine which one. In this particular case, button number 14 is connected to C. Okay, electric meter. Here's the electric meter we use. Um, we happen to use a craftsman, but you know, you can get various electric meters from different places. It doesn't have to be a craftsman. All electric meter, volt ohm meters are very, very similar. Uh, and they all have the basic settings which we use in this event, and that's volts AC, you know, it could be volts DC, amps AC, amps DC, and ohms. So in this particular uh, setting, what setting is used to measure voltage of a battery? Okay, again, we know batteries are DC, so we would need volts DC, or in this case, uh, it has a battery setting, which is volts DC, which are the same thing. Next question, the voltage of one battery is approximately what? So again, the students can use their voltmeter, put the, put the probes on each end of a battery, and they're going to measure 1.5 volts. The batteries that we use are all D cell batteries and they're all 1.5 volts. You know, there's a possibility the battery might read 1.4 volts, but that's, if you look at all the possible choices, anything in that range, the 1.5 range is the acceptable answer. So the answer is B. Okay, resistors. Students need to understand resistors and how to read the color code of a resistor. This question, the first in the first two bands, blue stands for what number? So if we look here, the first two bands, which is the first digit and the second digit, if we go down to blue, blue is six. So in, if we go to our answers, C, the answer is six, because our chart shows that band one and band two, blue is six. Okay, next one, 18. The resistance of the resistor shown below is what? So again, using the color codes, our first band is green. From the chart, that's five. The second band is blue. Go to the chart, that's six. So I know I've got a five and a six. Now the next number, the next band, determines the number of zeros. So yellow, from the chart, 
I have, I'm adding four zeros. So I have five, six, and four zeros. Five, six, four zeros. The answer is D. Okay, drawing a circuit. So the students need to use schematic symbols only. They need to use the correct schematic symbols and the blank space. So you see the circuit here, but I'm showing you the answer. So they would not see this circuit. They would see what's the, the text description on the left side, and they would have to draw the circuit. So our text description says two batteries in series. And so here's our two batteries in series. Again, you must show the polarity and you must have them both with the same polarity direction. So here we have the batteries in series in the same direction. And they're connected in series to two bulbs in series. So that means there's a line going to two bulbs in series, and then those bulbs then connect to the, the negative side of the, the batteries. So this is the correct answer. So again, the key things we want to see are two batteries with both with polarity, both in the right direction, the positive going to our bulbs, and then from there to the back of the batteries. Bulbs do not have polarity, so there is no correct way to draw or hook up a bulb. However, if you're asked to use an LED in the same problem, you would need to position draw the LED in the right direction and with the correct polarity. Okay, finally constructing the circuit. So again, the students will see everything that's in the box here. So they will see a text description of the circuit. They'll also see a a diagram of the circuit. And again, with this station, they need to use the components provided. Then you need to use the correct components. So again, here it's showing three batteries in series. So they need to, they need to make sure all the batteries are connected with the correct polarity connected to a normally closed switch. So this is a single pole, single throw switch. And it's showing two diodes in parallel. And again, polarity is important with, with uh, LEDs. I said diodes, I made a mistake. It's a LED is a diode, but it's a diode that makes light, gives off light. So uh, these LEDs, you can see there's polarity on them. And so the plus of an LED goes to the plus of the battery. So they would need to connect the LEDs as shown here with the cor correct polarity. Uh, with construct a stir circuit, um, you know, this usually takes uh, a good amount of time to construct these circuits, especially the hard ones. And so when they're done, the student must raise their hand and let me know that they are done and ready for me to examine and test it. They get one chance. Once I look at it and test it, if there's something wrong, they cannot correct it. So they need to verify their work and double check before they raise their hand. Um, the, and again, we say there's no partial credit, but to, depending on the uh, time and the amount of help we have with the event, we try to give partial credit if we have enough help 
volunteer help with the event. Um, but there may not be partial credit, so it may be an all or nothing. So it just depends. We we prefer to give partial credit. I'll, I will say that if we have enough help with the event. OK, that's it. That's uh, the presentation for today. Um, if anyone has any questions, I can uh, take your questions at this time. Back to the uh, the resistors. Are, are they going to be off of that picture, um, and they're going to be given a blown up picture like that, or are it going to be off of a actual resistor where they're really small, and we have to figure out which directions which? No, the the um, well, there's two there's two there's two pieces to your question. They will be given the color code chart, and the second part is are they they will not be looking at the actual resistor for the uh, test they will be looking at uh, a picture of a you know a blown up resistor so it will be very easy to see which side is which and which which one is band 1 okay perfect Any other questions? And there was a, <clears throat> there were a couple of a general question that I answered in the chat. As far as the tests, there is a couple of old tests that are posted under uh, macomaso.org. You go to the elementary, and then you go to charged up, and you will see all the presentations, all related material in that section. Correct, and just to add to that, uh, those are example questions. Those are not the questions you're going to see on the test, of course, but uh, they're a very good representation of the types of questions you're going to see. So you may see types like that with different uh, numbers, different values, and, and changes to those, what you see on the website. But they're a good way to practice. Any other questions? Yeah, I got a question here. Are you going to have any other kind of practice workshop before the contest itself, or this is it? No, this is it. OK. So again, there is a, if you go to the Macomb, Macomb SO YouTube channel, uh, there was a recording done, I want to say, four to five years ago, so it may be a little bit outdated, but uh, there is a couple of videos out there. I want to say there is at least one that's hour plus long. So if you watch that, that will help you uh, with a lot of stuff. Also, this particular uh, session is being recorded and should be posted in three to five days under under the same page, or I think most of the sessions today are being recorded and all of those will be posted under each of the events. Correct, and then there's the handout. There's this year's handout and previous year's handout and the handout uh, are additional sample questions uh, which are a good way to uh, learn and practice. Thank you. I noticed in the uh, example that you used for the drawing, um, it showed, I believe, a, a normally closed switch, but it didn't specify that. Um, it just specified a single pole, single throw switch. Uh, is that something that they need to draw, like a normally open, normally closed, or can they just draw a standard uh, single pole, single throw? Yeah, if it's if it's not specifically requested, 
as normally open or closed, then either one would be an acceptable answer. Any other questions? Again, just to uh, wrap up, uh, look at the website. There's a lot of materials there. There's a, a fact section with a lot of questions and answers that have been asked. And if you have additional questions, you can ask a question on the website and I will respond. And if someone asks a question, we will post that question then to the fact so everyone can see the, the, the answer that was given. I believe Mukti has a question. Please unmute yourself and ask the question. Yeah, I was just wondering, like, beside this um, workshop or handouts, is there any like a book or any other website that uh, I can teach myself first or and then I can start teaching my team like. Like more in detail. Um, it's no, I mean, the, the information that's available is um, is what we present and put everything on the website. I mean, there's other places I guess you could go for basic electrical theory of understanding volts and uh, current and resistance and circuits. Um, but uh, between this presentation and the handout and uh, um, you can get the kit and again, the kit, the there's the handout that's in the kit, which is on the website, is a very useful training tool. So those would be the things that we have available for you. Thank you. Are there going to be any questions on um, actual calculations of voltage, amperage, and resistance? No, no, there is no question specifically calculating in, and it, you know, you need to understand the relationship of vehicles IR, but other than that, they're, they, they won't need to do any math. And typically, how long is this event last? Uh, the event uh, is... Uh, it's usually, I mean, it's in a half hour block, but it takes about uh, 20 minutes to to complete. There'll be a uh, very short introdu introduction. When the students come in the room, there'll be a, a short introduction just to explain the stations, the seven stations and how we rotate between the seven stations. Uh, someone is timing. Uh, so they will tell the students, OK, start. And then when the time is up for that station, then they will will say stop advance and they have to stop immediately, advance to the next station and begin immediately. We don't tell them to begin the second station. They just immediately begin. And uh, and then we again after the end of the two and a half to three minutes, we tell them to stop advance to the next station and there's volunteers there that help move people in the right direction to make sure they're going to the right station if they're not finished in one particular station they can always come back to it or done is done no done is done so everyone gets an equal amount of time at each station and so when you advance to the next station, no, you cannot go back uh, to the previous station. And also, if you finish early, you cannot advance to the next station if you finish early. You have to wait at that station, double check your work, and then when the time is up, everyone advances to the next station at the, next, at the, at the same time. Somebody had a question on uh, direct link to the resource guide. Like I stated before, if you go to the macomaso.org, go to the elementary section, 
go to the events and go to the charge top. Everything is uh, everything is on that one page. Everything that we are talking about is listed on that page. OK, I guess if there's no more questions, we'll wrap it up then. Thank you for attending and again, uh, uh, good luck with the event.